Hi guys, welcome everyone. My name is Vera and today I'm going to show you how to paint our wonderful painting called Magic in the Air. I'll be showing you this copy um, every now and then, but also you can refer to the image you can see on the right of your screen at all times. Now we're going to start with a black canvas. So if you don't have your canvas painted black, no problem. Take a couple of minutes right now, paint it black. I would highly recommend if you have the ability to actually do two layers of black paint um, before you move to painting along with me here because one layer of paint usually leaves it quite a bit streaky and maybe not perfectly black uh, but two layers of paint give it much much better coverage and make it more full on solid black and to speed up the process you can always grab a blow dryer which I will be actually using quite a bit here on this painting today so feel free to do one layer of black paint and then blow dry it and then second layer of black paint and blow dry it. It will literally take you less than five minutes if you to do both of them as long as you use a blow dryer and have it dry and ready to go. So as you guys do that, if you haven't come uh, pre came prepared with a black canvas or pre-painted black canvas, you can do that and if you came prepared that's no problem just bear with me i want to get through a couple things first and then we're going to start painting so first thing this is a video tutorial that's a pre-recorded video tutorial so welcome you're more than welcome to pause it at any point as it is premiering right now you may not be able to pause it right away but one that once the premiere is done you can definitely pause it and give yourself as much time as you need and go at your own pace don't try to keep up with me um, please feel free to pause it as many times as needed or rewind and rewatch sections of it. So this is how we design them. We want you guys to be able to do that. We want you to be able to rewind and rewatch or pause as needed. And then really take your time on this. And also this video is going to stay right here on our YouTube channel pretty much indefinitely. So if you can't do this today or if you just want to watch today and you don't have the supplies and you want to come back and do it any other day, please do that. No problem. All right, let's go through all our supplies. First thing you're going to need, again, pre-painted canvas. I am using 8 by 10 inch, as you can see in comparison to the size of my hand. It's not very large, but you can do absolutely any size. My instructions are not size specific, so any size will do. Next thing you're going to need is some paint. Uh, if you guys painted with us before, as you know, we only use primary colors, which is red, blue, yellow, plus black and white and i'll be mixing them into every single color that you see on your painting now if you prefer to use pre-mixed colors instead of primaries that's totally fine just grab your favorite colors that are from all the blue color scheme or blue and compatible colors so you can grab blue you can grab purple you can grab teal or maybe mint um, like a light green cold green color plus of course black and white um and maybe some pink as well so any color that you can see here, if you have it pre-mixed, you're more than welcome to use it. From brushes, we always recommend having a few different brushes. We always recommend having at least three different brushes, large, medium, and small. This painting is no exception. I recommend that you have th at least three different brushes, large, medium, and small. They can be uh, pointy. As you can see, these two are rounded brushes, plus the small one is a pointy one. Or instead of a rounded, large and medium, I could very well use a square, large and medium. It will not affect my painting. They will turn out just as well. It really doesn't matter whether I use this set or that set. Either is fine. Just something larger, something medium. And regardless of the shape and the size of your medium and large brush, you're going to need a really good detailed brush because we do have quite a few details here. And for this brush, the most important feature is that it needs to have a nice pointy tip. And that's pretty much all we're looking for here. And as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be using blow dryer quite a bit. Now, you don't have to use a blow dryer. A blow dryer is not a requirement for this painting. But I will be using it to speed up the process. Otherwise, there will be a lot of drying breaks for me. And just to speed it up, I'm going to be using blow dryer. Now, if you prefer to ha actually have a drying breaks, there is nothing wrong with that. You can take a coffee break, you can take a scroll your phone breaks, you can take a call a friend, respond to email kind of breaks, attend to your child breaks, any kind of breaks that you need to take 
while your paint is drying that's totally fine it normally dries maybe five to ten minutes between the layers so it's not a big deal it's not going to extend your painting by a ginormous amount of time but if you want to you can grab a blow dryer at any point and just speed it up all right so what we're going to do first is i am going to first i'm going to lay down this white bottom part because this will require quite a few layers so we may as well start here we're just going to take straight white and we're going to cover up this little ground here ground section so and i'm going to use my large brush for this i'm going to dip it in the water dab it off on a paper towel take some straight solid white i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to add a little curve And then I'm just going to color the rest of it with white as well. Right. done covered and as you can see it's not perfect coverage so we're going to add another layer there in a little bit but for now i'm going to wash off my brush dab it off in a paper towel and i'm going to start mapping out those beautiful swirls here so to map them out i'm actually going to make blue that's not very bright and as it's going to go on a black background and also then dry up it's going to get even darker and that's great because that allows me to make mistakes that gives me a margin of error if i go right away with a light color and then i don't love my positioning it's going to be really hard to fix so i'm going to make a blue that's kind of on a darker side i would say so do you see not a straight up dark blue but it's not very light either and yeah, it may look a little lighter as I place it on a black right now, but as it starts drying on my black, it's actually going to get much darker and closer. It's going to get something in between these two colors. So I just make some sort of medium dark blue, I would say. And then we're going to start positioning our swirls. So it doesn't really matter which swirl you start with. Uh, for me personally, I'm going to start with this biggest swirl on the right. So do you see it takes maybe I would say even half of this space on the right here but really it doesn't matter you don't have to be super particular about you know the size of your swirls so you see i dry brushed my swirl number one and i'm going to continue dry brushing so dry brushing is when you use not a lot of paint and you just barely touch the surface of your canvas so it's not so it doesn't look in the end like a blobby line so it looks more like a nice fluffy light ish line and i'm going to continue doing that you see just to make them a bit more a bit softer a bit fluffier i'm happy with this one this one looks nice to me okay now I'm gonna go on the next one. Next one I'm gonna bring from here all the way here and curl it up here. So something like that. And again, I'm gonna go over it a couple more times just to fluff it up, soften it up, make it thicker as well. Cause this blue is an underlay for all our following colors, for all the other colors that we're gonna be adding. This one is an underlay. So don't be afraid to add a little bit more of it. All 
Okay, now I want to talk to you guys about what happened if you don't like it. So let's say you positioned your curve and you're like, oh no, that didn't work well. You can actually just fix it. It's so easy because we're starting with a black background. So basically just take black and cover it up. But first I would say, if you have a blow dryer again, dry it up because otherwise as you try to cover it black, it's going to start mixing. You're going to get muddy colors. It's going to take you many more layers. So let's say you added a, um, one of those curves and it just doesn't look good. Grab a blow dryer if you have it nearby. If not, give it five minutes to dry up first and then just cover it up with black or correct it with black, whatever is easier. If it's just completely wrong, then just cover it up with black, blow dry it again, and then go add it and reposition it. If it's nice, but you just maybe don't love an element of it, then you don't have to erase the whole thing. You just basically correct it by covering up with black areas that you don't love. And then I'm going to position my last full on curve. It's going to be somewhere right here. So it's going to come from here and it's going to curve up around here. And then I'm going to um, fix those corners by filling them with something else. All right, I am okay with it. I don't mind it. So now I'm just gonna, I have a large section here and a small section on top. So for the large section here, I'm gonna add not full on curve. You don't see it as a full on curve, but you're assuming that there's another curve somewhere right there, right? That's occupying that corner. And here I'm just going to add a little smidge, the same, the same um, thinking behind it is that we're assuming that there's something in there, some curve in there occupying that corner. So I'm happy with my layout, but again, before you move to other colors, I would say take a good look and see, are you happy with your layout? Do you like your layout? Because if you don't like it, it might be much easier to fix it now before we get too far versus trying to fix it later. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to blow dry this right away. So I apologize for the blow drying sound because, and the reason why is a lot of the times how we would structure a painting is that um, would work somewhere on this section, then there, then here, then there. So by the time we get to the last section, our first section is already dry. So we can go back and layer there and just continue that. Uh, but here, because we're kind of working on everything at the same time, I'm already done layering first layer, but my first section is not dry yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and dry everything up and I'm going to be doing that throughout the layers. So blow dryer it is. Nice and dry. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a second layer of my weight. So again, I will wash off my large brush, dab it off on a paper towel, take straight white. And I'm gonna go ahead and add this. Now see, now this looks good. This looks very white. All right, and right away, I'm gonna start going on to my swirls, but I'm actually still gonna incorporate a bit more of a darker colors for now, because I wanna lay out all my dark colors before I move to the lighter ones. So my next dark one that I would like to lay out is gonna be 
uh, purple. So it's going to be fairly dark purple. You can do this with a large brush or with a medium. Either is fine, but I'm going to mix it with a large one and then I'm going to decide. So I'm going to scoop some red on the side. Then to this red, I'm going to add a little bit of blue. You don't need much blue. Blue is more dominant color. So you only need a little bit. You don't need equal parts of red and blue to make purple. Or at least in my case, I don't. And I find in most cases with small brands of paint, you don't. But again, yours could very well be an exception. And you see it turned into a very dark purple. So now for me to see it at all as purple, I need to add some white to it. Not a lot. I'm not aiming to make it light. I'm just aiming to make it visibly purple. Because now it's kind of hard to say that it's purple. It almost looks black, right? So I'm just going to add a little bit of white just to make it a bit more visibly purple. Now this is really good. It's, do you see it's nice and dark, but it is visibly purple color. And with this color, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start adding this in addition to my existing blue. Do you see it's still nice and dark? I don't want to cover up all my black, by the way. So I'm adding it onto the blue that I just added or around it. It's, see for yourself, if you still have lots of black around it, you can add around it. Just make sure you don't cover up all your black. Or you can add it on it. Either is totally fine. This is just an addition to make it more interesting, right? So whatever works. And if it happens so that you do run, run out of black, so let's say you accidentally don't realize you keep adding colors and you don't realize that you cover up all your black, it's not a big deal. We can always add black on top too, just a little bit to, you know, have some more contrast in between. All right, so that's my second color. And my third one is gonna be a slightly more vibrant blue. So I can add this one right away too. I don't have to dry it. So I'm gonna take some white, some blue, mix them up. And I'm gonna make that third blue. So it's gonna be third color, second blue. It's gonna be a bit more vibrant than my first one. So if this was my first one, I'm gonna attempt this one. So do you see it's a couple shades lighter but I wouldn't call this necessarily light blue either. It's not light, it just is a little lighter, so it's gonna show a bit more vibrant. So let's try this and see how it looks. And this one, you're gonna go more closer to the middles of your swirls. And we're gonna dry brush it. This one is actually really beautiful. It's really starting to come to life here, slowly. All right, now I'm gonna wash off my large brush and I'm gonna switch to my medium brush. And what I'm going to do with my medium brush is I'm going to make 
a pink. You can still continue using large brush. It's not a big deal, but I think I'm going to switch to a medium. And I'm going to make a quite vibrant pink. So I'm going to use some white, some red, but high content of like high amount of red, as you can see, to make like a hot pink. And I'm going to use just a little bit of that on my brush. I'm not going to use a whole bunch. Dab off the extra paint on my paper towel. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start smudging it in. And you see, the color looks completely different on my plate and on my black canvas. This is what it looks like on my plate. It doesn't read that vibrant on my canvas because I'm adding it over black, right? And again, around the same sections, we're going to start brushing it in. It's up to you where you brush it. You don't have to brush it like exactly everywhere. You can just choose spots where it's going to go and where it's not going to go. So I added in quite a few areas and now I'm going to add it right here at the upper area at the top of the snow here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash off my brush, dab it off on a paper towel and with a clean slightly wet brush, I'm just going to go ahead almost like a watercolor technique wash it into your into the white here to spread it a bit and make it softer um, if there are some lines that happen here some texture nothing wrong with that that's good keep it keep the texture if this is not working out for you this wash technique what you could alternatively do is you could take some white straight white and blend it from the bottom with the white so that's another option that can be done. A little bit more pink here. All right. That looks pretty good. And then after that, I'm going to move to my light pink. So I'm going to to the same color I just used. I'm going to add lots more white. Make it lighter. And again, we're going to dry brush some light pink use a little bit of paint on your brush only you don't want too much so again if you need to, you can even dab it off on a paper towel and then very lightly we're gonna flick in some of that light paint because i am going so easy on my paint here i didn't need to blow dry those layers in between because my paint was it's pretty dry the only one that's right now currently, for example, is not dry is my dark pink, but dark pink is a compatible color. It doesn't have to be dry. I'm happy for them to mix. So because all of those technically are compatible colors, they don't need drying in between. Now, if let's say we move to teal right now, I would need to dry in between because teal and pink, even though they're complementary, they look nice together, not compatible, meaning that if you paint teal right over pink, it's not going to blend into a mind-blowingly beautiful color. So therefore, it's better to avoid the mixing. And therefore, it's better to um, dry in between those layers. So just going to add that pink wherever. I think this is good because these areas are going to have a very bright, vibrant teal. 
so we don't really need to have too much pink in there but of course you add wherever you feel like and now I'm going to blow dry it because again next color I'm going to be moving to is going to be that vibrant light teal color so which is not the most compatible with pink so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to blow dry this again wonderful and moving on to our beautiful teal so I'm gonna start with a base of white I'm gonna scoop some white on the side and I'm gonna start by making light blue so I'm gonna scoop just a little touch of my blue mix them up make nice light blue and then to this nice light vibrant blue I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to give it that teal undertone Okay, let's try this as you can see it looks pretty vibrant so again just taking a little bit of paint on my brush not a whole bunch and I'm gonna go ahead and start swirling it into my swirls nice and light dry brush technique So I'm just continue using the same color for now that minty green teal color and all the areas that are not highlighted enough yet I'm gonna add this color too notice I'm mostly adding it quite central in a way that I'm adding more to the center of the swirl versus to the edge of the swirl because it's very light so it's gonna pop a lot all the lighter colors are better added closer to like the core of your swirl Right, and another thing I'm gonna do with this minty green color, which I hope I have enough of, so I don't mix too much paint, is I'm gonna add it on my snow. So right here on the top, I'm gonna add it very similar to what we did with our pink on the other side. So we're gonna add that, and then I'm gonna wash off my brush, dab it off on a paper towel, and with a clean wet brush, I'm just gonna smudge it into this white. And pink so to merge them together again if this technique is not working out for you you can always take white and just blend it with white from the other direction and now I'm gonna go ahead right away and I'm gonna add some blue and purple there too so just a little bit of blue any blue will do but I still have a bit of this mixed blue, darker blue so I'll add just a touch of that on the top here and mix that Actually, let's add purple later after we had a snowman.
All right, right now we'll just do the blue and the teal. Okay, it's looking pretty good. And now I'm gonna take just a tiny smidge of white. And by the way, I'm done laying my colors. I'm happy with my color scheme. I don't need any more colors. Um, I'm only gonna add white and snowman and um, some white elements, but I'm not adding any color color. If you feel like you would like to add a different shade of pink, a different shade of purple, a different shade of blue to your background, the best time to do it is right now. You might add like a smidge more, some something right here. But really, you want to finalize it now because we're going to start moving to the elements and then you wouldn't be able to add any more of those swirly colors. The same applies to black. If you feel like you lost your black somewhere in between, you might want to add it now because again, once we start adding the elements, you're not going to be able to add it in. So to finish up my swirls with swirly motion, I'm going to take bare minimum amount of white, really rub it into my brush, dab off the excess paper on a uh, paint on a paper towel, and super lightly dry brush it, super, super lightly on the areas that I want to be glowing the most. So right here, right here, right here. So do you see they look like they have extra glow because of that? And again, I'm just gonna let them dry for now. Uh, we're gonna add all those starry elements in a second, but for now they can be just drying. And as they're drying, I'm gonna start adding snowman. And just what we, with what we did with the bottom, we're actually gonna need to add a couple layers to bring our snowman to being really nice and white. So it's to be solid white, right? So, so it's not looks cheeky or transparent. So I'm gonna take some white on my medium brush. You can use any brush that works for you, but probably not a large one, maybe a little too big. So either medium or small is good. And I'm going to start with the base of my snowman. So somewhere around here, I'm gonna put one circle. If some of your colors from the background mix into it, I wouldn't say it's a big problem here. Not at all, because it's just a first layer. Then I'm gonna add a second one on top of it, slightly smaller. And the third one that's even smaller. Oh, I'm two little legs. All right, and now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna blow dry all of this.
and then I'll give my snowman a couple more minutes to manually dry and as, as it's drying I'm gonna work a bit on my background so here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my small brush I'm gonna grab dip it in the water I'm gonna grab some white paint and I'm gonna add some of the smudgy dots so smudgy dots are gonna go do you see where we have those little stars right so some of underneath them are going to be some smudgy dots so let's say start right here so I'm gonna add a dot and then I'm gonna grab my finger and dab 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 until it becomes a nice smudgy dot and I'm gonna continue doing that and you can have as many of them as you want and they can be different sizes they don't have to be you know all the same size some can be bigger some can be smaller some can be more smudged, some can be less smudged. And I'm going to add the big one right at the start of that swirl as well. So adding those smudgy dots. So I think this is good smudgy dot wise for that one. So I'm going to do one here too. Big one right where it starts smudgy dot and then a couple smaller ones I'm going to add a couple smudgy dots following this one here too and here so again starting with the biggest one and if your finger gets too dirty with paint of course dab it off on a paper towel you don't have to proceed if it's just creating mud right if it's not like creating a smudgy dots but instead it just creates god knows what you don't like it it could be just because your finger is too dirty and it's just creating fingerprints at this point versus smudging the dots so feel free to get rid of all the paint on your finger and then do it again All right, so we added the underlay. Now we're gonna add the actual dots. So how are we gonna do it? I'm gonna start with positioning three stars. They're gonna be right in the middle of my swirls. So I'm gonna add a dot using small brush and a little bit of white paint. Make sure your paint is nice and liquid so you can go to fine lines with it. And then from that dot, I'm gonna put a line up and line down. Then line to the left line to the right all from the same dot and then in between from the same dot I'm gonna add a couple more lines they're gonna be slightly smaller than the first four and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other two swirls so dot line up line down line left line right and then a few more smaller lines in between Done. those are my stars and after I have my stars I'm going to add my dots so now you can dot with either the painting end of your small brush or if any of your brushes has 
a wooden end so rounded end do you see like that it has a nice round because sometimes uh paint brushes have more like a chopped off end that would not work but if it's nice and rounded it will give you a perfect dot so you can just dip that in white paint and go ahead and dot up all those beautiful starry areas and just the only thing i'll caution you don't try to create don't try to spread them super even try to have a bit more in some areas a bit less in others that's what makes it beautiful the unevenness here is good and some of them will align with your smudgy dots smudgy dots the ones that we just did with our finger and some of them wouldn't and both of that is okay so do you see now it looks like almost like a constellation of some kind it looks very galaxy like starry beautiful so that's the goal that we're going to move on to all of those areas those smudgy dots were just an underlay for that and as you notice i'm not covering the entire swirl i'm mostly covering a section of a swirl All right, then the last section that I'm going to add is going to be right here. And then my background is done. All right, and that's it for my background. <coughs> now I'm gonna go back to my snowman here, and I'm gonna do uh, another layer of white, but also I'm gonna be adding my color now. And you can do this with medium or small brush. So I'm gonna start with my medium brush here. I'm gonna take some white, just straight white, nothing else. Straight white. I'm going to add again, I'm going to add my first circle, so the base of our snowman. But unlike the first time, right away now, you can either make light teal or light blue, something bluey. So I'm going to make some blue, I'm going to take some white, some blue, mix them up. You could technically, yeah, again, you can make teal too if you want, it's mostly something that's present underneath snowman. And we can add a little line of that on the bottom here right away before our white dries. So basically blend it in on this bottom part. Like that. You can go darker, you can go lighter. Again, you can adjust the color. You can make it a little more teal, a little more purple. It really is up to you. All right. Then I'm going to wash off my brush. Dab it off on paper towel, I'm going to go on the top. So I'm going to go higher, and I'm going to do this middle section. So again, I'm starting by just adding second layer of white. Then again, I'm dabbing my brush off on the paper towel, taking my blue, the one that I just used, this one, taking some of that, and I'm repeating the same thing. I'm adding a little bit of that to our snowman. And then I'm moving to my next layer, which is uh, my next circle, which is going to be the head. So again, I'm adding some white. And here I'm going to switch to a small brush, actually, because it's 
medium one can be a little bit too big at this point and then I'm gonna take some of my blue again and same steps I'm gonna add it right here there we go and then with a small brush I'm also gonna add a little legs again so I'm gonna add second layers on my legs Now, um, I'm going to let that dry up for a little bit, but I can add the smaller elements such as the hat, nose, hands. So let's start with everything that actually, yeah, let's start with the black elements. So I'm going to take my small brush, a little bit of black paint. I'm going to start adding my black elements. So I'm going to start by adding a hat. It's going to be a tin hat. I'm just going to add a tin here. You can get creative and do any other hat too. It doesn't have to be a specifically a tin hat. I'm going to add a strap going down the handle. I'm going to add the eyes. And I'm going to add the mouth. Made out of little pebbles. Done. Then after that, I'm going to add the hands. You can make them any shape that you want them to be. The little branches there from each side. And some buttons. And of course, you guys can get very creative with this snowman. You can add shoes on him. You can add scarf on him of any kind. Um, you can dress him up however you want. Then we're going to add a carrot nose. So we're going to make some orange. We're going to take yellow and red. We're going to mix them up. And that would be our orange for a carrot nose. Done. And then right away, you can take a little smidge of white again on your small brush. And we're going to add some highlights. So we're going to add highlights on a hat, assuming that there's some snow on his hat. We're going to add some highlight on a nose. Maybe there's a touch of snow on a nose too. We're going to add highlights on our arms. because I know dark on dark is hard to see there, right? And the last thing that we actually have to do is we're gonna finish up with a little bit of purple underneath him. And you can use small or medium brush for this. I'm gonna go with medium right now. So I still have a little bit of purple. Do you remember the one that we used earlier? If you don't have, you can mix any kind of purple. And then I'm gonna water it down a little bit because I need it more like a watercolory consistency. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it right underneath here and around my snowman like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash off my brush, dab it off on a paper towel, and with a clean, slightly wet brush, I'm going to go ahead and again in a watercolor-like technique, merge all of that into a background so make a nice little wash there and ta-da our snowman and our beautiful background called magic in the air is done and i'm sorry guys for the glare and yeah the black is difficult canvas to film because it glares so much that it doesn't really make it justice it's actually super contrast 
Um, but yeah, with all those lights around here, it's, it's hard to see because the glare is a bit. And that's it. And of course, feel free to continue working on it as much as needed. If for your personal liking, you need to add a few more stars somewhere in between, that's awesome. Go for it. If you want to add another, maybe like three little snowmen, as for snowmen children here somewhere playing and it's throwing snowballs at one another, go for it. It doesn't have to be done when I'm done. It can be done when you are happy with it. So feel free to modify it however you want. There are a lot of ways you can take this painting. You can add some, um, you can add a snow castle, you can add a gift. So you, again, I would probably add a little children playing here, a little snowman children. Um, you can add more stars in the sky, maybe in between on those black areas. So continue working on it until you feel like you're done and then sign it up. Uh, so just grab your brush of any kind. I would say small one is probably the best or find tip Sharpie or pen or anything that you would like. And then you can put your name or your initials or anything else to indicate that this is the artwork that you've made from a tutorial but you still made it all by yourself and you did a good job so feel free to sign it and then proudly hang it on your wall thank you for joining me guys if you have any questions feel free to leave them in comments we do check comments and i'll be happy to answer all of them for you if it's more of an emergency you can always email us or message us on facebook and you will get response faster uh, please feel free to share your results with us. We always love seeing how they turned out. So it would be a big treat for us if you do. Um, there is a link in the description of this video where you can share your results. So feel free, it's a Facebook group. It's free to join. Um, feel free to share your results there. We always encourage everyone to share their results so then we all feel like we did it together in the same room. And of course, if you enjoyed this tutorial and you wanna say thank you by tipping me, you can use a PayPal link that's in the description of this video and leave any kind of tip that you feel like. They're always, always greatly appreciated. And many thanks to those of you who pre-signed up for this tutorial and who already pre-tipped even in advance without seeing how it's gonna go. Thank you guys for putting your faith in us and trusting us with this. Your support is greatly appreciated. And I think that's pretty much it. Feel free to check out all the other videos we have here on YouTube and all the other ones that we have coming up. Bye guys, thanks for joining me.